know if this is filming, like, gross or not. I can't tell. Hey guys, it's Jay, and today I am here with my December wrap-up for 2016. I read a total of 13 books this month. So I'm going to try to zip through them, but knowing me, I ramble, so we'll see how long this video ends up being. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I read for the month of December was Made You Up by Francesca Zappia. Zippia. Probably saying this one wrong, but... We always do. This book follows Alex, who when she was seven years old, she released an entire tank of lobsters with the help of a little boy who she called Blue Eyes. The only thing is, her entire life she was told that this scenario never happened and it was actually the first of her many schizophrenic episodes to come. So Alex is now a senior in high school and she is attending a brand new school and she gets a job at her local diner as a waitress and one day she gets a new customer and it just so happens to be blue eyes from us so many years ago. Now Alex is second guessing everything that she was told because she was told that blue eyes doesn't exist but he's obviously sitting right in front of her so she needs to figure out what is actually real life and reality and what are hallucinations and part of her schizophrenia. I think that the book was really well done. I ended up giving it a 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. It was really interesting to see how Alex was thinking with her schizophrenia. It was cool how she knew she had this mental illness because in a lot of schizophrenic books I find that the author's like, oh they don't know that they're schizophrenic, but Alex knew and she didn't let that define her. I really liked how unreliable Alex was as a narrator because you didn't know what was a hallucination and what was real while you were reading until it was revealed. I really liked how witty and sarcastic Alex was and I really did like Miles even though he was such a jerk. I liked their relationship together. Also, the plot twist at the end, I'm still not okay with how that developed. My little heart is still broken about it. The second book that I read for the month of December is Smoke by Ellen Hopkins. This is the sequel to Burned. Which I gave a 5 out of 5 stars. This one I only ended up giving a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I did enjoy it. it. covered a lot of important issues like rape and homicide and homophobia and illegal immigration. And the plot was interesting to read but it just felt wrong to me. I didn't like the love in the story. I think that it was done in a way that... The boys came into Peyton and Jackie's lives and basically everything was magically fixed because these boys came into their lives and I just... That's not how life works. I'm sorry. It's not. And I just didn't like that part. The next three books I got from a vlog tour for Let's Talk Books and they are part of the True Blue trilogy. I have a full review of the trilogy if you want to check that out to hear my full thoughts. I ended up giving this series a 3 out of 5 stars altogether. I go into detail each book in the review if you want to know more. But this is by Joyce Scarborough and it includes True Blue, Royal Blue, and True Blue Forever. It was okay. It wasn't the most amazing series, but it wasn't the worst series, so average rating of 3 out of 5 stars. Next book, the 6th book I believe I'm on? I could be very wrong, but we're gonna go with 6. It was Night Film by Marisha Passell. If you watched my top 16 of 2016 books, you know this was my favorite book of 2016. Obviously, I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. If you want to know my full thoughts of it, then check out my review. I love this book. I thought it was amazing. I loved the multimedia. And yeah, just check out my review if you're interested in my full thoughts, because I gush about that book a lot. The seventh book that I read was Crank by Ellen Hopkins. Again, I love me some Ellen Hopkins, but this book fell a little bit short for me. I don't think I'm ever going to find a book that I liked as much as Burned or Identical. I think those are going to be my favorite Ellen Hopkins books for the rest of my life, but I'm going to read everything by her. I ended up giving this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. It follows a girl named Christina who is basically the perfect daughter, the perfect straight-A student, the perfect everything, until she goes and sees her absentee father for the summer and she meets a boy named Adam and also takes a little walk with a monster she calls Crank. I flew through this book because I wanted to know what happened next which is how it always is with Ellen Hopkins for me. I just want to know everything that's going to happen. It fell a little short for me. I thought it was very repetitive. I did like the storyline. But it got to the point where it was just the same thing over and over again. It was kind of like okay this could have been like 
500 pages shorter because it's the exact same thing. It was very intriguing plot line. I wanted to know what was going to happen next even though it was so repetitive. The next book that I read was Heartless by Marissa Meyer. I have a full review of this. I love this book. 4.5 out of 5 stars. I'm not going to go into more detail because I gush about it in my review so check out my review but I love me some Jess, I love me some Cheshire, and I love me some Cass. And that's all I'm gonna say. The next book that I read, I am so thankful that I received an early copy of this because it's like it's going to be one of the best books of 2017, I think. And it is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. This book follows Star, who is a 16-year-old who witnesses her best friend Khalil be murdered by a police officer. When the news that Khalil was unarmed during the altercation reaches the media, it becomes this huge case and Star needs to decide whether or not she's going to speak out about what happened or stay quiet in order to protect herself. The book was inspired by Black Lives Matter and I think that it was done so incredibly well. It covers such important topics like racism and police brutality but it does it in a way that is not thrown in your face. Not only does it cover those important issues, it also covers family and friends and community. I think that this book is very important and I think that everybody needs to read it if they get the chance. And I really liked looking and reading from Star's perspective because like obviously like I'm very white and I'm very privileged and I grew up in a very white neighborhood and that's all I'm ever going to know so I'm never going to experience what Star or people in those neighborhoods and things like that experience every day of their lives and it really makes you think about how lucky you are. The book is definitely a roller coaster of emotions and I think that it deserves all the hype that it's getting. It's going to be a top book of 2017 for sure. Next book I was so excited for. So I'm like so disappointed that I didn't like it as much as I was hoping for but I honestly think it's just because of the amount of hype that came along with it because I've wanted it for over a year now and I finally got it. And it is Illuminae by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. I gave this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I thought I was going to love it, like, beyond my greatest expectations. Don't get me wrong, it was good. I really liked it, and I liked the multimedia. I thought it was a really cool concept, but just wasn't everything I wanted it to be. I did really like Aiden, though. I thought he was hilarious. The next book that I read for the month of December was Casey West's P.S. I Like You, and this book follows Lily, who writes on her desk one day the lyrics of a song from a band that nobody knows. So when she returns the next day and the next lyric to the song is filled out, this causes her to write a note back and then the other person writes a note back and it starts them off as this little pen pal journey. And it's basically the story of her trying to figure out who is her pen pal and that causes things to happen. And that's all I'm gonna say. But I gave this book a 3 out of 5 stars. I thought it was cute. It was a cute contemporary, but it wasn't anything special in my opinion. Like, I'm not going to reread it, and it's not one of my favorites, but it was cute. I did really like Lily. I thought she was sarcastic. Like, which I can appreciate because I am the queen of sarcasm. And I thought the relationship was cute, but yeah, nothing special. The next book that I read was Teach Me to Forget by Erica M. Chapman. And this was one of my most anticipated books for 2016, so when I won the Twitter giveaway, I was excited. But it follows a girl named Ellery and she wants to commit suicide. She has everything planned out. She has the date, she has the gun, she has the cleaning crew to come clean up the mess once it's done. So when she gets to the store, she has the wrong receipt and the security guard comes and it ends up being a boy who goes to her school and his name is Coulter Sawyer and he quickly figures out what she has planned and he decides that he's going to stop her. I did like this book. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I thought it was entertaining and engaging. It was filled with a lot of tropes that really bothered me. Ellery was written as those... I'm not like other girls, girl. And it's just, it's so overdone at this point where I was just like... Uh, okay, we get it. You're a special little snowflake. But I think that the overall message was very important. And I liked how it started. It started off being one of those books where the boy doesn't come in and sweep the girl off her feet and all of a sudden she's cured by the love from this boy. It started like that. It did end up being that, but it was 
a nice attempt at not being like that. And the overall message was really well done, in my opinion. And the final book that I read for 2016 was Our Chemical Hearts by Crystal Sutherland. This was one of my most anticipated books for September, so when I won an arc, I was very happy. But it fell very short for me. I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars because I thought that the message was well done. At the beginning, it really bothered me. It follows a boy named Henry Page who has never been in love until Grace Town walks into his drama class and he wants to get to know Grace because she's not your typical average girl. She wears oversized boy's clothes, she doesn't brush her hair, and she walks with a cane. And Henry finds this all very fascinating. And the more he gets to know Grace, the more beautiful she becomes to him. But Grace is hiding something from him, and the more he tries to get close to her, the farther and farther away she pushes him. I think that Henry was very whiny and naive and very annoying, and it was kind of creepy the way that he, like, literally stalked Grace for the first chunk of this book. Like, literally the first, like, 200 pages or so is literally him stalking her. And I don't understand his infatuation with Grace because honestly she was so moody and rude all the time. Which like it makes sense why she was moody based off of what she was going through. Like I probably would have been very moody as well. But I would have gotten to the point where I was like you are not even worth it because you just make my life hell lady. I really liked Henry's parents and his older sister Sadie. I thought they were the best part of the story by far. But the major issue I had with this book was the disability jokes. It was like so awkward the way they were thrown in. And I get that they were trying to like lighten up the situation, but like disability isn't funny. So it kind of made me uncomfortable. I did like the overall message by the end of the story. Henry took a 180 and like everything wrapped up nicely. So I did give it a three out of five stars. It was enjoyable but just the disability jokes were too much for me. All right, guys, so that is my super long rambly December wrap-up. Hopefully I can get it under 15 minutes. We'll see. But I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye.